dear students before watching my class set your video quality to a high resolution as shown here in my today's class i have divided it into two parts that is video number 6 and 7 each carrying about 15 to 18 minutes each so that it is easier to student to understand the topics effectively in my sixth video i am giving the details about the atomic radius covalent radius and van der waals radius and in seventh video i am going to give the details about the explanation of variation of atomic radius that is as we move from top to bottom in a group the radius will be goes on increasing and as we move from left to right in a period in the periodic table we see there is a regular decrease in the atomic ra radius sixth video starts at 1 pm and the seventh video start at 1:30 pm both the videos gives the details about the chapter periodic table particularly atomic radius covalent radius van der waals radius and the variation of atomic radius as the increase in the atomic number of the elements in the form of a group and in the form of a period in our last classes we have seen regarding the classification of elements into metals non metals classification of elements into triodes classification of elements in the form of a octave mendeleev classification and also you have learned about the mosley's classification of elements in the form of a periodic table called as modern periodic table depending upon the modern periodic law and also you have studied the salient features of modern periodic table where the elements are arranged in the form of increasing atomic number by dividing them in the form of a vertical columns called as groups and horizontal rows called as periods and also you have learned about the classification of elements into s p d and f block elements so today i am going to start the important properties of some of the functions in the periodic table such as atomic radius ionic radius covalent radius along with ionization energy electronegativity electron affinity and the variation of all these properties along a group and along a period as the atomic number increases so today i am going to deal with the first important property that is atomic radius atomic radius 
द एटॉमिक रेडियस ऑफ एन एलिमेंट इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द न्यूक्लियस एंड द आउटर मोस्ट इलेक्ट्रॉन इन एन आइसोलेटेड एटम द फॉलोइंग फिगर इंडिकेट्स द एटॉमिक रेडियस ऑफ एन एटम यूजली वन हाफ ऑफ द स्पीयर इट सेल्फ इज गोइंग टू बी कॉल्ड एज एन एटॉमिक रेडियस एटॉमिक रेडियस इज ऑल्सो बी इंडिकेटेड बाय हाफ ऑफ द डायमीटर दैट इज रेडियस इज इक्वल टू डी बाय टू हेंस द एटॉमिक रेडियस ऑफ एन एटम इज एक्जैक्टली द हाफ ऑफ द स्पीयर और द डायमीटर coming to the definition of atomic radius atomic radius of an atom may be defined as the distance between the nucleus and a point where the electron density is effectively negligible the atomic radius of an atom may be defined as atomic radius of an atom is the distance between the nucleus and a point where the electron density is effectively negligible according to the theory of uncertainty it is not possible to measure a velocity as well as position of a moving particle all we know that the electrons are a moving particles with a very high speed around the nucleus here the electrons are revolve around the nucleus in the form of a planets revolving around the sun so here it is not possible to measure the exact position of a moving particle and this is in accordance with the hessenberg's uncertainty principle that is a velocity and the position of a object cannot be measured exactly at the same time not only the uncertainty principle even it is not possible to us that to say a exact time because the time is always goes on changing hence it is not possible to tell the exact time for another example it is also not possible to measure the exact distance of a fast moving train so this is in accordance with the theory of relativity and uncertainty principle the uncertainty principle is given by the german physicist called werner hessenberg and called it as a hessenberg's uncertainty principle so according to this principle it is very difficult to define the exact position of a moving electron but we can estimate the approximate distance between the atoms in a molecule for example in case of a covalently bonded molecule the distance between the molecules have been determined by the spectroscopic data and 
radius is called as covalent radius coming to the covalent radius one half of the distance between the nuclei of two covalently bonded atoms of the same element in a molecule is taken as a covalent radius of an atom of that element the covalent bond should be essentially a single bond so here i have taken the example of a hydrogen molecule where two hydrogen atoms are bonded covalently and the distance between the two hydrogen atoms in a molecule is going to be taken as a covalent radius of that molecule so when we come to one atom in a molecule so half of the radius is going to be called as a atomic radius of a particular atom that is a hydrogen atom when we take the distance between the nuclei of two hydrogen atoms in a hydrogen molecule and it is measured as 0.74 am strong units so half of this distance that is 0.37 am strong unit gives the covalent radius of the hydrogen atom here it is not possible to get an isolated single atom as it is not possible to get a single atom hence it is not possible to measure a atomic radius of a single atom that's why here we have taken a molecule its distance and its half of the radius is going to be considered as a atomic radius of one atom particularly in case of hydrogen molecule as the distance is 0.74 am strong unit hence the covalent radius of a single hydrogen atom is found to be 0.37 am strong unit so coming to the van der waals radius one half of the distance between the nuclei of two adjacent atom belonging to the neighboring molecule of an element in the solid state is taken as van der waals radius of the atom of that element here the figure indicates covalent radius between a molecule and a van der waals radius between two adjacent molecules for example this is the one molecule showing a covalent distance and half of this will be gives the covalent radius of a particular atom in a molecule van der waals radius is essentially the distance between two non bonded atoms of two adjacent molecules that is the van der waals radius is essentially the distance between two non bonded atoms of two adjacent molecules and it is related to effective packing size of the atom when the element is in solid state here the figure indicates 
so this is one molecule and this is the another molecule the distance between the two adjacent molecule is going to be taken as a internuclear distance is taken as a intermolecular distance and half of this will be the van der Waals radius. This diagram indicates the covalent radius a half of the distance between the internuclear distance gives rise to a covalent radius. Likewise here in the van der Waals radius the distance between two adjacent molecules is going to be called as internuclear distance and half of this internuclear distance is going to be called as a van der Waals radius. Hence the structure or the figure itself indicates the covalent as well as van der Waals radius.